Recently, we chronicled the fans of Beyonce versus Taylor Swift. I had someone come up to me and say, we really went in-depth on the fans of both of those artists. And someone I know and respect came to me and said, I heard that segment. Yeah? Why did you do it? Oh. And I said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We just Was it garbage time? It was It was very late. It was the very <laughs> last second yeah. of garbage time. It's like- I mean, when, you, you have to ask for a little bit of leeway in garbage time? It's garbage time. Not only is it garbage time, it's like when the quarterback was taking the knee <laughs> up 31-7 to 7 with 40 seconds left in the game. You know, it was one of those. The linemen are shaking hands yes, across the line. Yes, exactly. The coach is like waving. The, They're just going to do one more snap. Right. And then you get to walk across the field, put your clipboard under your arm. You know, that's when it was. But we were talking about who has more passionate fans. I said Beyonce because I've never heard a Beyonce fan say anything bad about Beyonce, period. But Chris Dim and Biggie, and probably rightfully so, said no, Taylor Swift, because they go so wild over getting her concert tickets and those types of things. There is a girl who just was given, now this is a girl in Minnesota, that her parents surprised her by getting her Taylor Swift concert tickets. She knew she was going to get them, but she wound up getting floor seats, like Uh. top five rows of the Taylor Swift show when it comes to Minneapolis. And she thought they were going to be for her friends. So at first she was like, well, what's the big deal? And then when she discovers that it's her tickets. Look where her tickets are. Floor tickets to Taylor Swift. Where's her seat show? On the floor. Why? Except for their actual tickets. What? I'm not kidding. Stop. I'm going to cry. <laughs> it's a joke. It's literally a joke. It's not a joke. <laughs> it's the best birthday present for me ever. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's good news. I know. I'm so She's sobbing uncontrollably mm. over the floor seats at the Taylor Swift show. I don't. I don't get to sit down. No, there is no. There's no sitting. I mean, no, you don't. Where's our sit. seat? That, there isn't one. I can't. I can't see the show in that. I have to sit down. Oh, yeah. No. I, I, there's no. You prefer a box. I, that's the only way. Private restroom. Private restroom. Room. Room. Private, yeah. but restroom. I saw a Bruce Springsteen show once in a box, mm-hmm. and others that I knew were sitting like down below in the bowl. And they were uh, standing the entire time. And they'd look up at me, and I would be giving a polite... Knees clap. crossed, opera clap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> opera clap. That's what you call it, opera clap. I don't do that whole stand-up. I, I, you know, mm-hmm. I just, just simply don't do that. There's another woman. This is Taylor Swift-related as well. Her name is Rene, Rene Hutardo. She just got married at a Taylor Swift concert. And I read about this last week, but now she's speaking out about it. Well, she, it just started, right? Yeah. The, show, I mean, the tour was in Phoenix yes, last week. That's to, where it was. Start. It was the very first show at in Phoenix, and she and her fiancé, Max Bachman, decided, let's do it right here. So they brought in their hmm. efficient. and they, you have to clear that with a Coliseum? No. They just they didn't do it. No. They just got in the aisle and did it. Hmm. And her whole thing was, when are we going to do it? Because... You know, it's loud, and they just go from song to song, and people are screaming and cheering the entire time. She chose a moment when Taylor, apparently Taylor does a poem in the middle of her show, and then one very quiet song, and she knew that. I really thought, like, the whole concert, I was like, damn, there's, like, no good time to do this. Her production is so loud. Like, it's really hard to get married during uh, a concert. Go figure. But they made it happen. Mm. The the Ugh. the uh, <laughs> the, uh, the romantic and Biggie is saying yes a thousand times. No, yeah, just her like it's hard to get married during a concert. <laughs> you think <laughs> this is? I wouldn't have done it. This I wouldn't is, have done it. If I, was, groom, if, if I was the groom, I'd have said you're, you're out of no. your damn mind, and I'm reconsidering everything. <laughs> <laughs> not just like going to this concert, like everything, everything. And if I'm not mistaken, mm. I read the next morning, like I guess Saturday morning, the show, the first show was. Friday night. Mm. Taylor played for three hours. She did. 44 songs. Yes, she did. She did the whole... I mean, That's it was, like Springsteen-esque. Yeah, three over three hours of show, and they decided to do it, she's explaining here, during a poem and during a song called Invisible String. But it, just, it really turned out that, like, that was, like, so perfect of just, like, okay, we'll do it during the seven poems so that we could hear each other. That was, like, a concern. Like, um, so during, during that time... Um, it was just perfect. It really just, I swear, Taylor Swift planned it. Um, so we did. We got married during the seven poem. And then we just like spent invisible string like vibing and also trying to calm down from the excitement. They spent invisible string Ugh. vibing. <laughs> vibing. <laughs> 
we know what the bride wore? I think it's regular concert clothing. I'm sure, yeah. You not, know, not, not white dress? N- no. Just regular. Just They were in their usual street or whatever you'd wear to a concert. Taylor T-shirt. Taylor T. You know, I'd never heard this song, Invisible String. And now it's your favorite. It is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard in my life. I... It is so beautiful. Maybe you could renew your vows if, if Taylor I would, swings I, past I, the East Coast. I would do that. She said I looked like an American do you think this couple will inspire others to get married at a Taylor Swift yes. show? Or will the yes. Swifties think this was an abuse of Taylor? Well, since Taylor didn't know, I don't think you can call it an abuse of Taylor. You just do it. Right, but the- it's a di- disrespectful to the show, to the other fans. I don't think so, because they did it quietly, and I don't think people really noticed, unless if that little area around them. They didn't put it on the big screen or anything, and they just did it. They, she said she wanted to do it sort of out of the way. Great. That song. <laughs> Perhaps you'd be more comfortable in the concourse. You know. <laughs> Perhaps you'd be more comfortable to church. <laughs> <laughs> you bozos, get out of here. <laughs> Ruin my concert experience. <laughs> that, uh, no way. If I was standing around them, I would be so mad. Would you throw food and drink? Yeah, because yeah. I'd be like, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is what is it called? Invisible string? Yeah. Invi- here's what invisible string is about. Because I'd never heard it before. And so today I said, I'm going to see what this song is about. It's about before we knew each other, there was an invisible string connecting us. You moved out here. You ate at my favorite restaurants. I didn't know you, but there's an invisible string. I'm weeping. I'm weeping. She's done it again. I said, oh my God. She's done it again. It's not even a hit. It's not even a hit yet. I have no problem with the song. I bet it's great. It's I, wonderful. And yeah. I, I heard it and I said... This is amazing. I want to get married. I I want to get married, right? This is like me and my wife. There's an invisible string always connecting us. For us, it's Life 360. She's looking. (laughs) She knows where I am at all times. Yes. There's an invisible string. Yes, it's not the magic of of the heart. No. No, it's technology. It's technology where she knows when I'm passing a Chick-fil-A, I'll get a buzz. Go into Chick-fil-A. Take a right. Get me something. (laughs) Exactly. I want some nugs. Are you at Trader Joe's? I'm near Trader Joe's. Get something. (laughs) <laughs> That's what she does. Uh, so they're going to not only they are married officially. They had all the paperwork. It counts. It counts. But now they're going to do a bigger wedding with their family. And she says, of course, Taylor will be a part of it. I am going to walk down the aisle to Invisible String. So obviously I was um, so I was like so happy because it really like hits your body, like the adrenaline of it all. But it was it was so precious. I think now when I walk down the aisle to Invisible String, it's gonna be that much more sentimental to us. Taylor's done it again without even knowing she did it. And this bride, if I was the family, I'd be like, we're not paying for anything now. <laughs> <laughs> you fools went and got married at a concert that you actually paid an extra ticket to bring in your officiant, who I'm sure is just one of your friends that got a certificate online. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. They're probably going to the show anyway. Yeah. They're probably sitting with them, you know. It's a, hey, do this. Unbelievable. Marius. Do you know what I read about concerts? You know how, of course, this dynamic pricing has made concert tickets so unaffordable for so many people. That some people now are going to Europe to see concerts. Even though in the long run it costs more, they get a week in Europe. One woman said that tickets for, I think it was Beyonce a couple of years ago, were going to cost her $900. She got them in Paris for $92. So she just went ahead and made mm-hmm. a European vacation out of it. Say, And in London, there was somebody else on tour, uh, Coldplay or somebody, and the tickets were going to be $800 in Dallas. They turned out to be... $80 or $100 mm. in London. So they went ahead and went to London. You know, it's like, uh, we'll travel. We're going to do a vacation anyway. Mm. Yeah. Let's do the vacation and save money on the concert. Oh, sure. What a weird... It's a lot of moving con- parts, though. Well, yeah. yeah. But if yeah. you're going to do it, you just schedule your vacation. Okay, we're going to go to London. Let's schedule our vacation around it, and then we buy tickets for a yeah. lot cheaper. But if your mm. tickets are $400 to a concert, say that's two, that's 800 bucks. Right. Plus, you got a hotel, probably. Yes. If you're traveling out of town, food. That's right. Suddenly you're in twelve, thirteen hundred dollar territory, mm-hmm. and it's like, well, that you know, why not do another twelve or thirteen hundred and have a full on experience and see a concert at the same time? So I guess Europe doesn't have the equivalent of Ticketmaster. They do it differently. There's no dynamic pricing there. I just was reading that today, and they they compared prices. You know, in in Houston, a ticket for Bruce Springsteen costs fifteen hundred dollars if he's in Paris. It costs way less, mm. you know, one hundred and fifteen dollars. Mm. It's really, really. I didn't even consider that, but no. people are trying to work it together and do those kinds of things. This is old school music now. Uh, you'll know this. 
I think we talked about them a couple of years ago. The couple on the cover of the Woodstock album. If you know, oh, the the couple, the the man and the young man and young woman in a blanket. Yes, they are. Let me get their names. I'm sorry, I was so caught up with the Taylor Swift. <laughs> Wipe the tears from your eye. There's there's tears on his grid, Biggie. God almighty. The the grid is suffering. <laughs> tears have dripped up. It's water stained. Invisible string. <laughs> good lord. I mean, it was just that good. The woman on the cover of the Woodstock album has passed away. The uh, the the two of them were they had only been dating. If you know the cover of the Woodstock album, yes, there's a guy and a girl in a blanket and they were hugging and there are all these I can't people. Can you tell if it's early morning or kind of early it, evening? It looks early but morning. The light is kind of low. Yeah. It's a beautiful it, shot. It is. And they had no idea. Their names are Nick Eckerline and Bobby Kelly, Bobby the female. They had been dating for only two months, and they wound up, that was 1969, they wound up getting married in 1971, and they were married for 50 years, huh. more than 50 years. So, of course, they became a big deal. On one of the anniversaries of Woodstock, they talked to the two of them, and the the album cover, they had no idea they were going to be on it. They were skipping Sunday Mass, because she uh, got out of it, because she's like, we've got to go to this concert. They were only 20 years old. And they went, they've been dating two months. She's just passed away after a long illness. This is her talking about uh, the cover of the album. And the interviewer asked, well, when did you know? When did you see the album? When did you first see the photo? Right after the album came out. And was like, whoa. We were pretty excited. I feel very grateful that I have been able to share this experience with the man I've loved for 50 years. All those people under less than perfect circumstances and it was filled with peace and love and no violence. This world needs more Woodstock. That was the kind of person she was. Apparently her husband said she was always just very much into giving to others, very peaceful, shared nothing but love. They went and recreated the photo 40 something years mm-hmm. later he held up a peace sign. Uh, and the, and they, you know, they were together forever. She was 74 when she passed. What a great story. You should have started with that. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of, oh, we secretly got married at a Taylor Swift concert. You know what's great? You, it was hard to do it in the aisle because like, people were there. It was like a concert. <laughs> the ushers shush yeah. them away, uh, shoot asked, them away. I asked if they could turn it down just for like a minute. <laughs> <laughs> do you know that I'll bet on that couple's 25th anniversary or 50th anniversary, they'll go back to a Taylor Swift show, probably in the round, mm. you know, some theater in the round thing. And they'll go down there and recreate that moment and redo their vows at the 40th anniversary of their. No, they make it eight years and they're divorced. Yeah, I don't see. I yeah. don't see a Woodstock ending yeah. oh. for the dude who said, "Yeah, I'll get married to the Taylor." Yeah, show. it's a Woods, <laughs> It's a yeah. Woodstock ending. Is yeah, what he's they call destined it. to cheat with one of her friends. <laughs> Probably the one that married him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>